I love Bruce's perspective on how the cell functions and how important the membrane of each cell is. And he refers to it as the magical membrane. At other times, he refers to it as the membrane. So here's our conversation. In your, in your book, at one point, you refer to the magical membrane. Yes. And then at an, another point, you reword it in as membrane. So uh, tell us about the membrane and its importance. Yeah. When I discovered the research, which was going to become epigenetics, where the environment changed the fate of the cells, the first issue I have my colleagues is say, well, how does that work? Well, I had no idea how it worked. I had the observation that it worked, but I couldn't say how it works. So the media, they said, well, no mechanism. We're not paying attention to you. And so I had to search. I said, well, what is facilitating this, this, this thing? I said, well, first of all, environmental signals. I go, well, yeah, but the environmental signals have to get inside the cell. I go, well, how do they get inside the cell? Well, first of all, they have to cross through the skin of the cell, the membrane, okay? And when you look at the membrane in the electron microscope, it is the simplest little structure. It's so thin that scientists didn't even know cells had membrane until the late 1940s when the electron microscope was developed. Up to then, they just thought cells were like jello with fruit in it, and they just hold the, all the organelles like that. But then they found all cells have the same membrane. It's a in the microscope, a very so thin, you can't see it with a regular microscope. It's, it's visualized as dark, light, dark, like an Oreo cookie, okay? And, and that's all it was, just simple, dark, light, dark, very thin. In biology, there is an understanding, or was an understanding, that complexity uh, is revealed, uh, complexity of function is revealed in the complexity of the structure. When you look at the cell membrane, it had the least complex of any structure inside the cell. So immediately, everybody, well, what well, membrane? Uh, that's just like plastic wrap that holds the cell together. It's not more function than that. When I started to look into the nature of the cell membrane, uh, I started to realize something you couldn't see in the microscope, and that is there are proteins embedded into that cell membrane. And there are two classes of proteins. One is called receptors uh, in the skin of the cell. Receptors. I go, well, we have receptors. Eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch, pain, temperature, pressure. I say, ah, just like the cells, our receptors are built in the skin. I say, what do they do? They read the environment. Then what? They send the information to the inside so the cell adjusts its function to deal with the demands of the environment. So I said, oh, my God, the cell is reading the environment and then telling the, the material inside what they have to do, the organelles, and what we need to do to stay alive in this environment. So it's like, oh, my God, it's the membrane that's doing it. But it had that little simple structure. Well, I can't remember. I think it was 1985 is the night that I was redefining the membrane in a sense of the biochemical understanding. It's a, lipid, a bipolar lipid layer with hydrophilic and hydrophobic zones, blah, blah, blah. And I was redefining the membrane, and I looked at it, and the first thing I recognized is the membrane is crystalline because the molecules that make it up aren't all jumbled. They're all lined up like soldiers on a parade. That's a crystal. So I say the membrane's crystal. But the middle of the membrane, dark, light, dark, the light was fat, lipid. And if you have lipid in there, it prevents communication from the outside the inside. So I say, oh, the membrane is a non-conductor. Nothing can get across. Well, now you got a problem. How'd you get food in? How'd you get waste out? I go, has to cross through the membrane. That's when I recognized the second protein type, receptors, but they're connected to another protein type called a channel. A channel, by definition, is like a conduit, you know, like the English channel. It's a conduit to go between England and, uh, and Europe. It's a channel. Well, in the resting state, the protein channel is closed. Let's just look at it this way. I say, but when it's activated, the channel opens up and makes a tunnel into the cell. And stuff can get into the cell. I say, oh, when the channel opens up, everything can get into the cell. I say, no, it depends on the channel. Sodium channels let sodium in. Potassium channels let potassium in. Glucose channels let glucose in. Histamine channels let histamine in. I go, wait a minute. The channels that determine what goes in. I go, yes, it does. Then I say, are there channels for everything? I say, no, only for some things. So I changed my definition. 
the membrane is a crystal, it's not a non-conductor anymore, but it's not a full conductor. It's a semi-conductor. It only lets certain things in. So I, I write down, membrane is a crystal semiconductor. And then I said there were two kinds of proteins, receptors and channels. Another word for receptor is gate. So I say, now here's my definition. I'm sitting there in 1985 and I write down, uh, the membrane is a crystal semiconductor with gates and channels. And I go, that sounds familiar. 1985, where did I hear that? I just bought my first Macintosh, and I went to Radio Shack and bought a book called Understanding Your Microprocessor. And I said, I, think I opened it up there in the first chapter on the microprocessor. It says a chip is a crystal semiconductor with gates and channels. I go, wow, that's pretty interesting. What a coincidence. A membrane and a chip have the same definition. I wait and dig a little deeper, and I start to recognize, oh, my God, they are the same. The membrane is a chip, an information processing chip, and the receptor and a channel represents a bit of data, a bit of information, input, output, receptor, input, channel, output, I-O, bit of data. And I looked at it and said, oh, geez, my, the cell is a programmable chip. I go, and the nucleus, the hard drive with programs called genes. And I say, and the surface has the receptors, which are like keyboards. And the environment signals type on the keyboard. The receptors activate the receptors, send signals into the channel. The channel activates the proteins in the cell and activates the gene reading. I go, oh my God, a cell is a programmable chip in the environment is the programmer of this chip. Beautiful.